Welcome to the Electric Playground. Today on the show, we've got a diesel-powered rundown with the Iron Giant and Groot. Plus, we take you to the Hall of the Taken King with the latest Destiny expansion. We've angered a god, the Taken King. And then we find out if the new Mad Max video game is awaited in Valhalla or if it's mediocre. Also coming up, we have more Mad Max action with a review of the recent movie Fury Road. We gobble up a new Pac-Man game and much more today on EP Daily. Brought to you by EB Games. I'm your host, Victor Lucas, bringing you the latest in everything cool every single day. Now stop your grinning and drop your linen. It's time for the rundown. Everyone's favorite talking tree will be back in the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Director James Gunn has confirmed that Vin Diesel will reprise his role as Groot in the upcoming sequel, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This is sure to come as a relief to fans, given what happens to the character at the end of the first film. And there was some speculation that the part may have been recast with a different voice actor. I am Groot. Along with voicing all of Groot's lines, Diesel's face and movements were filmed to provide reference for the animation team. The new Guardians of the Galaxy movie will hit theaters in 2017. I am Groot! And before Vin Diesel was Groot, he helped bring to life an even bigger animated character. Take a look at the first footage from the Iron Giant Signature Edition, a newly remastered and extended version of the movie that includes never-before-seen footage. The film about a misunderstood alien robot voiced by Vin Diesel was a box office bomb when first released in 1999, but has since become a cult classic. Warner Brothers and director Brad Bird are revisiting the film in the hopes of connecting with new audiences for the first time. The signature edition will get a limited run in theaters later this month, followed by a Blu-ray release with new behind-the-scenes features later this fall. Oh, God. It's an all Vin Diesel rundown here to help me celebrate that is Marissa Roberto. Oh, he yeah, has one I of love the most him. He, he's a really lovable guy, isn't he? And he and he's got one of the most distinctive voices in Hollywood, and that's why he keeps getting these animated characters. What do you think of about the news that he's back as Groot? Okay, well Groot, I mean, I love Groot. That's who not a surprise, right? Who doesn't love Groot? Yeah. So of course he's gonna come back for a sequel of Guardians of the Galaxy. Are you kidding me? He's my favorite quick character. I want more Groot though. Do you think he's memorized his lines already? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Groot. Now they do have the pressure. They've got to deliver an awesome movie. Yeah. And, you know, that's kind of uh, a juxtaposition from what Brad Bird did with the Iron Giant because there was, obviously there was the kids' book and stuff out there, but nobody was expecting this movie to be such a classic, oh such a timeless classic that, you know, you can watch to, to this day but and it, still be blown away by. I know. It was one of those movies that you just watch over and over and over again, yeah. and I still get choked up cry, thinking about it. Oh, I my know. gosh, so just, just thinking about it, I get choked up. It's kind of like an E.T. with a giant robot, and again, Vin Diesel doesn't have a lot to say, but holy crap, does he make you believe in this giant character, you know, and the, yeah. the heart that this giant character has. There's something has. about his voice that carries, he kind of has a voice like yours, Victor the Kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's got one of those, you could be a robot. I could be a robot, yeah. <laughs> I could be a robot. Thank you. I aspire to one day be an Iron okay. Giant myself. everybody, everybody casting robots, Victor <laughs> Lucas is right here. I, I'm excited to see what the signature edition has to offer, the new scenes, and I also want to see more of the behind the scenes I stuff. I would love to see behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. Now, this movie. Brad Bird is has obviously gone on to direct some live action movies, not yeah. so not so greatly received Tomorrow with Tomorrowland. Uh, Mission Impossible uh, 4 did better at the box office, but now he is going back to animation. He's going to be doing The Incredibles 2. Where we love him. Yeah, and I feel like that's... That's his thing. I think it's his thing, and yeah. you know, hopefully this does good enough, so this means that everybody's got to go out to the theater or buy the Blu-ray that Warner Brothers is inspired to re-collaborate and see if maybe there'll be more yeah. Iron Giant in the future. Uh, can't <laughs> wait to see that movie again. And good on you, Vin Diesel. Even the roles you don't have to say a lot, you, you still say we a lot. We still heart you. And we do heart you. Now it's time to move on to something completely different. Destiny, the Taken King, is almost upon us. Let's find out more. We've angered a god, the Taken King, who promises to bring our destruction. There is something cooking in the world of destiny. We are talking about the Taken King. What exactly is the Taken King? Is he a mad guy? Is he somebody that I'm going to have to thwart and defeat? Well, the, the Taken King as a game is the first major expansion in the Destiny universe, and it kicks off the year two of, of Destiny, 
Oryx is the Taken King. He's an ancient, powerful hive lord who's come to this system on a mission of revenge and brought with him an army of Taken soldiers. These are combatants that have been taken from our dimension, ripped away, twisted and corrupted and changed, given new powers and abilities, and sent back to do his bidding with a single goal in mind, and that's to get revenge for the death of his son, Crota, at your hands. We have a brand new campaign that's focused on you finding and tracking down Oryx and his capital ship, the, the new destination in The Taken King. It's a giant, inscrutable, loot-filled fortress. You know, if, if he's a Dracula, then this is his castle. And there's a whole host of new strikes, public events, uh, patrols, and a brand new six-player raid. But lastly, if you're gonna you know, fight the new face of evil, you're gonna need new powers. There are three new classes in The Taken King. We have the Sunbreaker, the Stormcaller, and the Night Stalker. Each of them comes with new abilities and new powers. If we think of the Stormcaller, he's one of my favorite, he's got this new ability which allows him to summon the storm and just fire electricity from his hands and just roast dudes in a room. And it's just such a strong expression of power, it's fantastic. I think the other thing fans will be really excited to, to come back for are the, are the Taken themselves, the, the, the new combatants. Um, these guys have new powers and abilities that change the way you play Destiny. Like, the point of the Taken for us was to make players feel uncomfortable and to push them out of their comfort zone and to make the aliens of Destiny feel truly alien once again. And uh, they're just a blast to play. That's why I'm so excited to jump in to Destiny, the Taken King. Don't have to wait long now. Destiny the Taken King comes out September 15th. And don't call it a comeback. He's been here for years. We've got Pac-Man Championship Edition DX on the iOS after this. Welcome back to EP Daily, Maris. I yeah. could tell you where we're going next. Or I could show you. Please don't. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I'm assuming that was supposed to be Pac-Man. We've got Pac-Man Championship Edition on the iOS. Oh, here's our review. EP's mobile coverage is brought to you by Gameloft, makers of Asphalt 8 Airborne, which you can play on your Android or iOS device for free right now. Adrian hey, Lucas and I have a game for you that you have never heard of before. Yes, I you think have. the correct pronunciation <laughs> is Pikmin. 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 So it's Pikmin Championship <laughs> Edition DX. Right. Obviously, I'm talking about Pac-Man. Look at this thing. Star of the movie Pixels. Oh, right. Yes, Pixels. <laughs> I still have to see that one. I'm just kidding. I'm never going to see it. You're a good boy. This is just a, I mean, it's a Pac-Man game, yeah. but I mean, it's a Pac-Man game on a little bit of crack. Well, it's a, no, it's a Pac-Man game that went to the disco. It and, did. And, and, he, and he thinks he's right. sexy. He thinks he's sexy. He's got all kinds of great dance music, and he has <laughs> pulsating lights and awesome techno effects. And Superpowers. plenty of fun challenges yes. that you just follow along the way. Just one challenge after another. Easy challenges at first, mm -hmm. but most of them just involve you playing Pac-Man and playing it well. That's exactly how you have to do this game. Now, just play Pac-Man. Now, I want to tell you something. What? This is a game that you can connect an M5 controller oh, to. Oh, you're going to say this. All right, and I yeah. had to test that out, OK? but. <laughs> It actually plays better without the controller. It gets a little hairy when you're, uh, you know, at level 50 or whatever in speed yeah. and you're trying to run around and you've got all these ghosts and everything. But this is a game less about quick decisions and more about anticipation because yes. what they've done to tweak the gameplay here, the ghosts are sleeping on the board and as you pass them, they wake up and some of the ghosts have power pellets in them. Yeah. And so what you've got to do is hit some of the power pellets that are on the board just in a static way. Yes. Start your blue ghost kind of routine and then get some more of those power pellets inside of the ghost so that the, you can really up the ante with your scores. Right. So you'll have a whole troop of 30, 40, sometimes 50 ghosts yeah. if you get up to that just following you because then you want to get that pellet and then you want to just go back on those ghosts so and, and run a train much. on them. <laughs> It is Fun. so satisfying yes. because you're getting all of this power. You're getting all these points coming at you, and you see it happening, and it feels so good when you yep. get that pellet. And, and you're, you're dancing because the music and, is so and cool. And you're dancing, too. and you're collecting all the other pellets <laughs> that the other ghosts have inside them that are yeah. carrying them as well. So you're just perpetuating the fun here and the excitement of the power that you have in your Pac-Man, and you have that power. <laughs> 
this is such an addictive, compulsive, so you know, fun. wonderful experience. It's been available on other platforms. I think you could download it on the 360 and the PS3, mm -hmm. and uh, I think there's a Vita version. It's great everywhere you can play this thing. Oh, but it's, man, get it on your iPad. It's great that if it's... If you have an iPad, get on your iPad. Yeah, it's great that it's on iOS. Pac-Man matters. It matters. This is a great game, and there's, like, ghost challenges, there's time challenges, there's score yeah. challenges, and there's that persistent, pervasive leaderboard challenge as well. You want oh, to beat we'll your buddies. That. Yeah. I'm never going to beat my buddies on a leaderboard, but I'm going to try. What are you going to give Pac Man Championship Edition DX? Gets a nine. It gets a nine for me as well. Hey, look, everyone, Pac Man's back. Oh, ha, ha. Very funny. Now, listen, Marissa. Yeah. I can tell you where we're going next, oh, no. or I can show you. All right. Uh, ah, ah. Okay. Mad Max Fury Road is on Blu ray now, so here's a review of the movie. You said. A few vehicles in pursuit, maybe. We count three war parties. It's been a tremendously long wait for a new Mad Max movie, but it was worth it. <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road is out in theaters today. I and what did you think, you my something. friend? Yes. Actually, because my faith hurts. It hurts ah. so bad because I was stuck in this just this reeling, I couldn't, cringing, I couldn't stop while I was watching this movie because there's so much, there's just so much crazy on the screen. Oh, yeah, mostly from the visual choreography and the yeah. stunt work and the way that the camera moves in this thing. This is a tour de force. Yeah. George Miller is not a young man, but holy crap, does this movie feel vibrant, alive, yeah. and visceral. And I'm thinking, these guys were hopping in and out of these vehicles for this, the entirety of this movie. These stunt people are diving and yeah. hanging off of sticks and, yeah. and people are hanging onto the sides of trucks so it's crazy. incredible it is incredible and we should talk about the story a little bit mm -hmm. here now, this is my first experience with a mad max really? film oh yes my God. really so okay. i didn't know any of the backstory of mad max mm -hmm. i'm just seeing tom hardy for the first time eating a lizard yep two-headed lizard by the way just eating it no big deal and then he gets captured by this group of crazies yeah. and take them back to their base and this base is just where this big old man lives and he controls everything he also has women Such hooked up to he has sex slaves but he also has them hooked up to milk machines because yes. everyone drinks mother's milk so all of these visuals are just coming at you constantly and there is no over explanation this is just the champion of dystopian nightmares this yeah. series this franchise and I definitely suggest that you see the other Mad Max movies. With this movie, Miller puts himself on the Game of Thrones for making dystopian, nightmare, future vision, you know, sure. desert-based movies. Yeah. And it's hard not to see all of the influences. You see a lot of visual cues to things that have borrowed from Mad Max. But this is the originator, this guy and this franchise, and it's incredible to see it again. It does feel like a movie on its own, though. I wouldn't yes. think while I was watching it that there were movies that came before this one, which I think is a testament to the direction. Mm -hmm. And Charlize Theron is unbelievable. That's She's furiosa. So Yes. Freaking great. She's so powerful. Not only her, but the other women in this film that you're seeing. And this movie, there's so much power given to both sexes here. Yeah. <laughs> It stands out. It just feels so anachronistic. Right now, there aren't a lot of movies that are made like this. Most movies are made with superheroes or sci-fi things right yeah. now. It's all CG painted, and stuff doesn't really get made like this. This has a vitality that evokes Raiders of the Lost Ark, and honestly, it evokes the 80s. It evokes that 80s mm -hmm. rogue action picture, like the first Terminator. You get that sense like, holy crap, these yeah. people just really committed, and they built something wonderful and special. But I feel like the movie is just a chase scene for most of the film, and that's exhilarating, but I still wouldn't have minded a little more fleshing out of the Max character. But maybe this sets it up. Maybe this is the, the beginning of more to be told. I hope he comes back. I hope there's something between Max and Furiosa. Yeah. I really want that. Yeah. That girl is badass. They you, would make amazing babies. Yeah, I know, and I want to see more Furiosa. What are you going to give Mad Max Fury Road? Get the nine. 9.5 for me. Mad Max Fury Road is out on Blu-ray today. Yeah. And Marissa, you want to not tell me, but show me where we're going to go next? Well, no, not really. Actually, we've got Mad Max the video game after the break. Don't do it. Help me gather all this scrap. Huh? I'll fashion a harpoon.
Welcome back to EP Daily. We had our movie review of Mad Max earlier in the show. The Blu-ray is out today. Now, the Mad Max video game is here. Here's Vic and Marissa with the review. Just like the 80s, Mad Max is back, and he's more popular than ever, I think, right now. Mad Max Fury Road was an amazing movie. The Mad Max video game is here now. Finally, we are yeah. playing it. What do you think, my friend? First of all, this game took me by storm because I just really wasn't prepared for the massive sandbox that it was. Yeah. I knew that it was going to be a sandbox, literally, going into it, but then... You realize, oh my God, these are the same guys that made Just Cause 2. Yeah. Oh and my God, three. and 3 now that's yeah. going to be coming out. And it's just, there's going to be a lot to do. And guess what? There is. But you jump into this thing and they have this huge cinematic off the top. Like, hey, when is this thing going to end? Yeah. <laughs> because I'm just watching this thing play out. And you kind of want to jump into it because there's so much action happening. Yeah. It really impresses you with what the game can do off the top. And then you jump in and you realize, oh. I have a lot to do. And, and you're my, basically and my cars, starting naked at the beginning of the year. And my car is just ruined. It's yeah. gone. Yeah. And now i got to meet this dude, Chum Bucket, who's totally out there. He's yeah. a total whack job. He's a black finger, yeah. which means that he's good with cars. Help me gather all this scrap. Huh? I'll fashion a harpoon. So what he can do is basically build a car for you, and he promises to be a good helper for you, and so you start to trust this guy. That's basically how the game begins, is you trying to rebuild the life that you've known, this crazy life of just traipsing from wherever you can find gas to the next place that you can sure. find gas yeah. and water, and killing people. Max is a man of few words, yeah. as we know. So really, all we hear from him is that he wants his magnum opus. He yeah. wants his baby. He wants his car. Yeah. I love that his car's been christened that name, though. Like, that's the car's well, name. He loses the black on black, which is the car that he's driving at the beginning. It gets destroyed by this grotesque-looking creation. Lots of grotesque creations in the Mad Max universe named Scrotus. They have a good fight. I don't want to ruin too much about that. But Scrotus has got such a power over the land that you're basically you're taking out Scrotus insignias everywhere. And you're wiping out Scrotus. Scrotus gang members. You're trying to bring some semblance of peace and you're trying to create an alliance with different characters that you meet in there. Right, which is cool. And the way to do that is to go to each territory. So yep. this huge map starts to unveil itself to you. Yeah. And it's it's so cool the way it happens though because you realize oh my god like I have to go to each one of these territories yeah. and you have to try to convince these people usually through violence yeah. that they should be Almost always on, through your, violence. on yes. your side yeah. right but sometimes you can convince them yeah. but you usually still have to do some violence and the way the violence unfolds here though is a lot like Batman I love yes. the combat system here yeah this is a game that's definitely steeped in some of the lessons of the last 10 years of game making so there's some Batman mm -hmm. there's some Assassin's Creed yeah. you're definitely going to see a lot of Shadows of Mordor in there Totally. Where the map is revealing itself. And then you start to go from territory to territory, basically creating and crafting this legend. You can beef up Max. You can beef up the car. You can customize like yeah, crazy. But the whole way to beef up the car, I'm still a little confused about because I'm not sure what each thing is really doing for yeah. me. Like, what are spikes on the tire doing well, for me? Well, it's just I don't adding know. to your defensive capabilities. And then yeah, you, you can customize with paint jobs and with insignias and stuff. You can also collect all of the cars that you find on the path. Which you is just, great. You bring them back. Yeah, and you you can use them in your arsenal. And each territory that you unlock, like, that's another garage for you to store your cars, yeah. which is so cool. Yeah. I love that. Um, but that's the thing. That's the one thing that I didn't really enjoy as much about the game was the customization of the cars. This yeah. wasteland is so beautiful. They did a great job with the wasteland. Yeah. But I have to tell you that it knocked me out. It kind of put me to sleep a little bit mm. because we've had so many great variations on this dystopian nightmare wasteland yeah. thing, and I couldn't help but think of Borderlands. And I can't help but think of Shadow of Mordor and the Batman games, yeah. and they're really rich density of content and lots of really great, amazing details. Contrasted against that with this this sandy wasteland where you're busting through rocks and everything is just garbage and junked up and destroyed. Yeah, no, it's not a place that you want to hang out in, it, that's for sure. So it's hard to spend all of your time in this game yeah. because it is a bit depressing. I mean, I don't want to be in this wasteland, really. I mean, I love the Mad Max movie for sure, but I was yeah. happy when it was over because yeah. it was too much. It just gets to be too much. It's definitely fun and it's about as good a Mad Max video game as you can get. It's not for me as a gamer, for for sure, but I think it's still something it's, to behold. It's very, very good. Yeah. It just doesn't blow me away like the last few Warner Brothers Definitely. releases have. What are you going to give Mad Max? It gets an 8. Gets an 8 from me as well. Here's my review of the Mad Max video game. Up next, Twitter question of the day after this.
If you want more EP, go to our website, epn.tv, for bonus content and full episodes. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the Electric Playground. It's time for our Twitter question of the day. This is from our old friend Stephen Nikolic asking, do early gen 3D games age too poorly to have the same retro appeal as the classic 2D stuff? That's a great question. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, they do. They Because we are constantly inundated with 3D visuals that sort of get closer and closer to photo reel. Yeah. And so the, the early polygon stuff except if it's kind of done in a very stylistic way, it does I look a little too dated. Yeah, I guess so, because I do think of Mario 64, Super mm -hmm. Mario 64, and yeah, when you look back on it now, it does look really yeah. old, and you can't really, like I guess there needs to be a complete overhaul of that game. Yeah, you can kind of see triangles clipping and things yeah. like that, but in the old retro sort of, uh, uh, you know, the old, uh, the sort of pixelated stuff, mm -hmm. that all kind of aged pretty well, didn't yeah. it, with the old pixels? Oh, like, for sure, well now it's popular. Yeah, and now it's popular so. again. But also, we're starting to see some low poly stuff look pretty incredible as well. I think Journey was a great representation of That's that. True. There's this new racing game that I'm playing on iOS, which kind of harkens back to Outrun and it has sort of low poly. I forget what it's called, but Are it's really cool. Are we going to see that pocket? There'll be a pocket. Oh, there'll be a pocket review yeah. soon, everybody. Yeah, this is a fascinating topic, and we will bring it up again on Vic's Basement for yeah. sure. Good one, Stephen. Remember, you can get caught up on full episodes, and you can also ask us Twitter questions of the day on our website, epn.tv. On our next episode of EP Daily, we've got a rock new look at Guitar Hero Live. Don't miss it. Thanks for watching. Bye. EP would like to thank its sponsors, Nintendo, Xbox. As a beginner, I'm just playing the three basic buttons, but then as I start to get better and I move up to regular or more complex difficulty levels, I start to make bar chords and split chords, and my hand starts to move around on the neck of the controller a little bit more similarly to how a real guitarist plays. And that's what we were trying to do, is get you just that step closer to the movements and play style of a real guitarist.